happens if your child gets diagnosed with something at five years old and you don't have the money to be able to take care of it? But if you had 300 grand in the bank account to be able to take care of it, you give your child, you know, the life rather than seeing them pass because you don't have it, right? Like that's fucking hard. Welcome back to the Beyond the Wealth podcast. I'm your host, Andres Sanchez. And today we have Mo Fala, the ex-CEO and founder of Simple Solar and now the founder and CEO of Better Life Financial. Dude, thank you so much. I know we've been trying to put this show together. Yeah. I've been following you for a little while now. I've been really interested in interviewing you and hearing about your story. Uh, you've had a unique story and a, lo- and a lot of success, so I'm really excited to dive in. Yeah, man, I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. I know we, this is like our third time trying to make this happen, and I uh, appreciate your patience with me. Dude, of course. Like, that's, that, that's, not, that's not uncommon. I know that a lot of the people I want to have come on the show are busy, doing amazing things, and stuff does come up, so I've learned very quickly being flexible is is much better than being stubborn and egotistical and be like, oh, they didn't make time for my show. For sure. So, dude, I appreciate you still being in touch and staying with it. And, and, and now we're here making it happen. Absolutely. So I want to go right into it. I like to kind of do my interviews a little bit in chronological order. It can bounce around. But I know you had a big moment in second grade when your brother introduced you to the word entrepreneurship. Huh. You said it kind of was imprinted on you. What was that moment and how important was that? That's so funny. Uh, that's some good research right there. <laughs> uh, so so in the second grade, uh, there, was this, there was this assignment of figuring out what, your, uh, what you wanted to be when you grew up. And I went home and I just asked my family, or I asked my brother who was you know, a big influence on me at the time, on you know what what's the answer here and he gave me two answers and he said one was a cardiovascular brain surgeon <laughs> which doesn't really like make sense there's no actual specific like niche of that so it sounds cool it just sounds really <laughs> damn cool and the other one was entrepreneur and i didn't know what either of them meant right i'm like you know seven years old and uh he told me that an entrepreneur was somebody who owns hotels that's that's what he told me it meant and it was totally wrong. That's not, that's not what it means. I mean, an entrepreneur can own hotels. <laughs> yeah. um, and and that, you know, that idea of just entrepreneur must have just been like an implant. Like that just must have been something that was like put in my mind and that word became part of my reality. And a lot of people don't hear, you know, about entrepreneurship until, you know, much older in their life. Usually now probably a little bit better because of social media and like a little bit sooner yeah. because it's so prominent. But you know, in 2002, we didn't have, you know, Instagram, Facebook, that's, you know, people blow up this whole entire idea of entrepreneurship. But I think because I got stuck on this word from a really young age, you know, have you ever heard of RAS, reticular activating system? No. It's a part of your brain where when something starts becoming part of your reality, you start to see it more. It's like if you, if you purchase a, you know, yellow Mustang and you're driving around, you're going to start seeing more yellow Mustangs out yep. there because that thing that, that you have your attention on in your conscious mind is now part of your reality. So the word entrepreneurship became part of my reality at a really, really young age. And so I always just started to attract different opportunities that fit within the realm of entrepreneurship, but I didn't really realize that what I was doing this entire time growing up was actually entrepreneurship until I started to study entrepreneurship and realize, holy shit, I've been doing this for the last 15 years. <laughs> And um, so, so it definitely played a big impact and a positive impact on my life, but I didn't realize it at the time. It wasn't until later on when I started to really understand the importance of your thoughts and how that actually translates into your reality. Um, yeah, that's, I didn't realize it until later on in my life. Yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing how moments like that come back full circle later on and you, you don't realize it till you realize it. It's like, holy shit, like yeah. that was the moment right there. That was the inflection point that brought me to the person I am now. Mm-hmm. No no hotels yet. No hotels no yet. No hotels hey, yet. Hey, it's coming. Yeah, yeah. Miami <laughs> now, a, a Miami hotel would be great. Yeah. <laughs> um, so in your journey, and I, we don't have to dive too deep into this, but I also I always like to highlight it because I think it's very relatable to other people. You weren't the most outstanding citizen in that time of high school and, and going to college. Talk about that because I think it's important to know that like you can make a full pivot in your life and go and start to be a great person. It doesn't you don't have to carry some of that over. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So so early high school, you know, I was hanging around hanging around the wrong crowd, hanging around people who were involved in drinking and smoking and partying. And I I knew that it was wrong. But it was it was a group that I could attach myself to, right? And the idea of being and having the idea of having friends was 
and being part of a group was more important than me maintaining my own integrity. And, you know, especially in your adolescent years, right? Like if you're alone, you start to think something's wrong with you. And so we form and adapt to be able to be inclusive in the group. And I didn't have a group and I wanted a group and the group that would accept me was a group that did drugs and alcohol and all that stuff. And so I got into, you know, I got into it probably at 15 years old is when I started like smoking weed and drinking. And that became, you know, a habit that I carried on until I was about 23 years old. Um, and throughout that period of time, you know, I got involved in drug dealing. I got involved in selling pot, you know, supplying the school, the town, the whole entire area, um, you know, so that I could you know, supplement my my desire to smoke and drink and party. And as a 15, 16 year old, right, like you don't really have money to do that. And so like the quickest way is like, OK, like you buy a product at this rate and then you have a margin in between and you sell it at this rate. And so I was always like practicing really. I mean, it really was a practice of entrepreneurship. The drug yeah. deal was a practice of entrepreneurship. Yeah. And nobody taught me. Nobody, nobody taught me. It just it just made sense in my mind. Like you that's what I found was like the the smartest way to make money was that you're able to create margin and employees work for employees will trade their time for a given dollar and entrepreneurs and business people will trade their resources to be able to collect the margin and so everything I've, I've noticed that all these different areas of my life afterwards and all these different businesses that I got involved in everything was all based around this idea of margin and I mean that's really how businesses ultimately get formed yeah and you're definitely not the first person that sat here sure. and sold drugs and like looks back and it's like it was a business like like whether we, it sounds funny and it sounds comical but in all seriousness and like i know people from my past life it's a real business like in, for sure you we, are we, we divisions oh yeah i mean you're taking in orders you're getting some product mm -hmm. that's more expensive some that's less expensive to make a higher margin here for and sure. there it's like a whole operation yep in the moment no way are you thinking like oh i'm gonna sell and exit a massive company down for the sure road. and like Part of this will be the reason why I was successful because you learned just simple margin. Hey, mm -hmm. if I get a product for this and I sell it for this, I get to keep what's in the middle. Mm -hmm. And you start to build that obsession for, for entrepreneurship. Sure. And, and then and then you go, you know, then you go into the world of like volume and discount. And then people who would purchase more volume, you'd give them better prices. And then they would go and, you know, spread spread the product to other people. And then you form partnerships with other people and you have other people who you lose some margin so that you can pay for them to do delivery. Uh, you know, and so you're you're trading money to save yourself time, so you can put attention on things that actually matter more. You have you have accounting in there. You have you have loans, right? If you're getting if you're getting fronted, you yeah. know, if you're getting fronted the product, you know, you pay a little bit more to get fronted. It's like interest, right? So it's a loan so that you can go and deliver things faster, so you can meet certain certain clientele. Like the whole entire industry, it's it's a, I mean, it's really a whole entire business, yeah. right? We had we had we had I didn't even realize at the time, but until looking back after, it's like. We really had different departments in the business. It's crazy. And and uh, yeah, I think Elon Musk said that. Elon Musk said that if somebody was a drug dealer, it's uh, it's more valuable for them to be a drug dealer than to get an MBA. And uh, so something along those lines, not not exactly, but it was something along those lines. Elon Musk tweeted it probably within the last two months. Yeah, uh, and that was like an Elon tweet. Yeah. Now don't 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 go being a drug dealer. Like yeah. not. <laughs> Not, we're not, not condoning not dealing the, drugs. Not the advice. Don't drugs are not a good thing. Like I'm clean. I don't I don't do it anymore. Nothing like that. Um, but if you happened to ever be a drug dealer, then uh, know that you would probably crush it in business. <laughs> so from there, you're now getting older. You're becoming more mature. When did you take a stab at door to door and 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 that environment? Yeah. Um, you know, I failed every single year. Uh, up until I was 23 years old. And how many well, years was that just for context? The failure. Eight. Eight years. Eight failure. years. Yeah. Eight years of failure. Um, and I, I call it failure because every single year I'd make more money, but at the end of the year, I'd still end up with zero. And so how does a person go from 50 to 80K and end up at zero and go to 120K and end up at zero and then go to a quarter million and end up at zero at the end of the year? It's a, it's a, it's a pattern. Yep. It's a rat race. It's this. It's this cycle. Like you work so much harder, you're more efficient, but you still end up with nothing, which doesn't make any sense, right? Like it doesn't. So there was this pattern that kept on happening, and I knew that it needed to change. And you know, when I was 18 years old, I decided to become a millionaire, 
uh, by the time I was 25. And I say this all the time. Like I became a millionaire at 18, but the money didn't hit the bank account until I turned 25. And I love that. And the, the problem that I did is that my actions from 18 to 23 didn't align with what I set out to be. I was trying, trying, trying. I was getting the income up, but I wasn't doing anything in terms of like actually being smart and financially savvy. And a lot of that time I was still on drugs, alcohol parties, and Grant Cardone was a big mentor of mine. Still is a big, we just finished the you know ninth growth conference just a couple of days ago. Yeah, so um, banners. Yeah, it was great. And, and uh, you know, I followed him for everything and I took all of his advice. And every time I took his advice, I made more money. And he would talk about how, you know, drugs and alcohol will slow you down. And I was somebody who justified, oh, that's not for me. Like, I can still drink, I can still smoke, I can go out, I can still be successful. But just the same pattern. Yeah. And if you want to have change in your life, you got to change. It just has to happen. You cannot expect to have a different result if you continue doing the same thing. And so I was like, you know what? I've done everything except for listen to Grant on this. Let me just let me just cut out the weed, cut out the booze until I hit my goals. Until I was 23 and I moved to California so that I could, you know, really hit it hard with solar. I was doing solar here uh, for a couple months. And that was for someone else at yeah, the time. That's right. Yeah. I was doing solar for somebody else here probably like a month or two. Mm-hmm. And But they didn't have any door-to-door. They didn't, you know, you had to go source your own leads. They didn't teach you anything. So I went and I started with this other company out in California. And they basically taught me, you know, the basics of door-to-door. And that's how their whole entire model was built off of. So I went there and... January 3rd, I was smoking weed. January 4th, I got to California and I didn't touch weed for several years after that. And that's like, interesting because you would think going to California, you're going to start smoking more weed. Yeah. But I was, I was, I was decisive on my goals because I told myself that I'd be a millionaire by 25 and I was 23. And 23 here. I don't it's kind of like Jalen Brown. I'm going to win five titles before 28 and he's got zero and he's 27. So like you're in that moment where. I've got two years That's to it. make this happen. If not, I'm a personal fraud to myself. Yeah. And so I, so every single decision from that point came around, does this help push me towards my goals or pull me away from my goals? And it, it became easy at that point. It allowed me to become more decisive. And so I get to California in 23. By the time I'm 25 years old, I'm a millionaire. And it's it just goes to show how important, how important having a target is than actually sticking true with your decisions to be able to hit that target. Like, if I didn't cut that stuff out, I wouldn't have done it. And I became a millionaire, and then I smoked weed, and I started partying, and then I was like, this shit sucks. This shit's, it's not. So you got cool. back into the party stuff once you hit your goal. I did. And it wasn't fulfilling. No, I actually, and then, and then, and then my statistics started to go down in my life, in my business. I saw, you know, it, it just literally brought me down. And I was like, okay, I got off this pattern of failure. I changed my, changed my habits, got off this pattern of failure, started achieving success reversed successful actions and then got back onto a pattern that led me to failure and then my stats started to go down and then I cut it out again and then my stats started to go back up again and I was like all right like I care more about like my stats being high yeah. and like and winning in life than this temporary feeling of feeling you know you know loopy and you know laughing a little bit more and you know food tastes much better all that stuff. it wasn't worth it yeah. I care more about like holding and staying true to my own personal integrity than about this feeling of like being high or being drunk. So yeah, I got back into it for, you know, probably was on for like a month or two. And then I was like, what the fuck am I doing? I was like, fuck this. And then I just totally cut everything out. So in that moment, when did you kind of say, all right, now I'm going to go in and build my own business around this. Like I see the value. I see that there's money in solar. When did you say, screw it? I'm going to jump in and, and launch my own company. So I actually did from day one. From day one. From day one. Yeah, even here in Florida, even though it was under another company, the way that they had the model set up, it was a dealer model. Got it. So, so I wasn't like an employee of this business. I really was starting my own entity under their Kind of starting your own way. That's so right. that frames up a question that I had that I wanted to ask because that's something I get all the time. Like solar business comes off as a pyramid scheme. Yeah. What would be your answer to somebody that's listening and saying, well, that's a pyramid scheme. I'm not going to get into that. What would be your response? Yeah, I mean, the the basics of it is what defines a pyramid scheme is something where there's no tangible product and somebody has to do a buy-in to get in 
and they're not actually selling a product or service. And then to be able to join the company, you usually have to pay and then they're supposed to recruit people and those people pay in and there's no actual money in circulation. And so that money flows up to the top and then people at the bottom get crushed. Yeah. But if you actually take a look at every single business, every single business is a pyramid. It starts with a founder or CEO. And then unless they decide to be a solopreneur forever, they'll never be a pyramid. They decide to be a solopreneur forever. It will always just remain a circle, right? You as the CEO, founder, and that's it. So you're a circle business and it's you and only you. You're the janitor, the accountant, the tax guy, the salesperson, the marketer, all of that. And then as soon as you hire one person, you go from a circle, you go to a line, right? And then next thing is if you hire two people, you're the CEO and you have two, you got a triangle. So if you hire two people, you are, your business is already a pyramid. So every single business on the planet is a pyramid. Honda's a pyramid, Apple's a pyramid, Microsoft's a pyramid. Every single business on the planet is a pyramid. It's an organizational chart. You have the person on the top and then they have people that run different departments who have different managers, who have sub-managers, who have team leaders, who have salespeople, who have, you know, that are responsible for it. So every single business on the planet is a pyramid. Unless you're a solopreneur and you're a one-man show or you're a day trader and you don't have a team. And like, if it's just you, you will ultimately always end up in a pyramid if you have more than one employee. And really what separates it is the tangible product. The pyramid scheme is basically nothing. You just continue to push people in on a shady or, or yeah. not quality product. The other version of it is it's going to be a pyramid no matter what. But if there's a real product and there's real value being given out and there's real opportunity, that's that's just business. Yeah. Like, like in solar, for example, the only time anyone ever gets paid is if a customer purchases the product and it gets installed. The only time that people get paid. So it's on them to go out and like sure. be successful. It's not just actually free for all. It's direct sales. It's just, it's the same thing. Like, you know, if you take a look at, I don't know, let's think of a company, uh, Apple, for example, Apple is only going to ever make money when somebody purchases an iPhone or pays that nine ninety nine Apple music subscription or vision pro or whatever. So the only time that the business makes money is when a product gets delivered, but you have, you know, Tim Cook at the top and then all the different people going all the way down, but none of them make money. It's not like people have to pay money to go, go and join the company. No, no. The only time money ever comes in is when somebody purchases a product. So, so direct sales, direct sales is different than a pyramid scheme because direct sales is money is exchanged when value is exchanged. Pyramid scheme is you pay money to join an organization and that's the money that stays in circulation in the business. It's not actually a product that gets sold. It's an opportunity that gets sold. I love that. So, in this business that you built, Simple Solar, you do nine figures in three years. I think at the peak, you have over 120 people under you. What was that moment in your life like? Because that's quick for something like that to happen. Like things are just going quickly. You're breaking doors down. What was that moment in your life like? Which moment exactly? Like those three years of like the real company kind of turning into success. I mean, that you did like 25 million in year one. Yeah. That's got to be like a holy shit moment there as in this journey of you being an entrepreneur. Yeah, you know, it's like it 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 really boiled down to the the decision that we made and making sure that we got everybody in alignment. Like when you know that you're going to achieve something, you're and you put every effort towards it and you cut out every single distraction that doesn't help it, then you 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 are most likely able to actually hit and achieve the goals that you had. So it was myself and I had three others that were starting with me. And I told them, hey, we're going to we're going to 25 million, you know, this year. And it was 851 contracts that we had to sell. And they were like, you know, how are we going to do? I'm like, doesn't matter how. Like, the idea is more important than the mechanics. The idea is senior to the mechanics. Like, you have to have the idea first. The how gets figured out. And we just became intentional about that. And every single person that we we hired, kept on the team, you know, didn't hire, fired, all of it was based around, is this going to be in alignment with us hitting that $25 million in a year goal? And then we we round out the end of the year, look back at all of the statistics, and we did $28,493,000 and some change. So, so we surpassed it because we just kept all of our attention and target on that. So I can't say that it was like a surprise for me. Um, I'm not shocked by it. Um, I wish I would have set my goals higher. Um, and when you, when you're so intentional about something and you do the effort that's required and you don't underestimate it and you, you really just push to make it happen, you, 
it, it will happen. It will. It just does. You know, it's it's crazy to me because I've had so many people look at me just like you did and tell me that. And it I, I can't not deny it because it's just so many people over and over that say, I was blindly delusional and intentional about this being a success no matter what. There was no plan B, C, mm-hmm. D. And now they're sitting here telling me because it was success and it, it really happened. Mm-hmm. So it, it's crazy to me, like, just how intentionality, I don't even know if that's a word. Yeah creates these opportunities and allows you to kind of stay in that lane and be successful Mm -hmm. well here's the thing right like like you know god created us in his image right so so god is and and that's not that's not in terms of like body it's in terms of like spirit Mm -hmm. right and what did god do god was able to create something out of nothing right yeah so if we want to be godlike and and god aspires for us to be godlike right so we as 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 beings human beings spiritual beings we're able to create something out of nothing. And so God was intentional about his creation. And so if we can be intentional about our creation, then we can also create something out of nothing. And that's what it was. There was Before Simple Solar, there was nothing. And then Simple Solar was created. We set the intention of what we were going to do, and then it was something, right? So it's like intentionality, in, intentionality, attention on that intentionality, and consistent effort with enough force for a long enough period of time You'll be able to hit that goal. I love that. Before we go and talk about your newest company and what you're building, I always try and provide as much value for the people watching and listening because the majority of them are entrepreneurs, aspiring entrepreneurs. I want to provide value here because of the people listening. You had a moment in your business where you let emotions get in the way. You felt emotional about an individual. Mm-hmm. You knew that there was an there there was something wrong, but you didn't act on it. For sure. What was that moment and what did you learn from that? Because I know for a fact there's people listening that are in that same boat right now. Yeah, absolutely. It's a tough one and a lot of people struggle with it. So here's the thing. The business grows to the degree that you grow as a business owner. And when you're growing individually, personally developing yourself, you're seeing the business grow. And something what happened was for myself was that I had people who I was emotionally attached to, you know, known from no known from high school, known for like 10 years. And we were friends and we got into business together. And there's no problem with getting into business with friends or family either. I think it's great to get into business with friends and family. You just have to make sure that like you're aligned and and you continue growing as the business grows. So what happened was, was the business was growing. This person was, was one of the, you know, one of the first people that was in the business. And this person relied on timing and the fact that he was there from day one as the reason why he was invincible, mm-hmm. right? And and the business grew, but he didn't grow. And the business was adapting and changing to the market, but he con- continued to do the same actions. And I continued to allow it to happen because of, one, the emotional attachment, and two, is like, you know, he helped, he helped with the start of the organization. And it got to a point where I can continue to make changes inside of the business so that we could improve the administration, the organization, keep it cleaner, get everybody on the same page. And this individual was not really meshing with that. He wanted to just keep doing things the same way that it was done before. And I didn't have the courage to, to cut him. I didn't have the courage to, to get rid of him. I, it's what the business needed. I knew it's what the business needed. Other people knew it was what the business needed, but I didn't have the leadership in me to actually have that conversation and part ways with him. I allowed emotions to be able to get in the way of the logic. And, and so I did more so I I leaned into fear rather than leaning into courage and doing the responsible thing. Cause the responsible thing as a business owner is to do business needs. And I let that get in the way. And it was a, it was a huge problem. Ended up being a cancer, ended up leading to, you know, 45 people uplifting and uprooting overnight. Um, and, and it was a very, very big learning lesson that, you know, the only place for emotions in business is in celebration. Everything else is that. order and structure. I love that. Yeah. And, and, and it, it's tough to remove emotion from anything in life because, I mean, I always like to think back at like, when I think about my brain and how things work, if you go back and le- look at yourself in high school, Man, you would do the most impulsive things over like a feeling. Oh, I feel this way. I'm going to go do this. Then you look back and it's like, whoa, that was like a horrible decision. But in the moment, you were blind to everything but what you wanted to see from it. 
And that's still the way that we operate later on. It's just the things that we do impulsively are much different than what you did in high school. And in that moment, like, it's tough. Like, you know that person personally. You want to see the best in them. You want to think that things aren't as bad as other people are saying. You're Mm -hmm. kind of blind to what the real problems are. But the fact that you're able to look back now is very mature and say, you know what? That was a huge fail for me. How am I going to go double down? And I know in other interviews I've I've watched of you, you went back, reorged the organization, cleaned things up, Mm -hmm. and then crushed it again. For sure. So you turn that kind of cancerous bad moment into a moment to just double down and lever up. Mm -hmm. And you were successful. So it shows that you were able to quickly be mature and be like, okay, well, now we got to go do this and this, and then we're going to be successful. And you made it happen. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I did want to just highlight that because I know there's people who own businesses that are watching. They're probably in a similar situation, whether it's a family member, a best friend, a close friend. And it's important to know, don't let emotion get in between business. It's, yeah. it's, it's a non-emotional thing. You got to do what you got to do. There's usually a cookie cutter, just simple answer cut that person out and move forward yeah and like i'd say like trust your intuition like when you when you know that something's not good like it's it's you know it's not good yeah so trust your intuition more your intuition is going to guide you i i've I've seen you mention that a lot that you make decisions based off intuition if you feel a certain way i mean that's what that's how you sold simple solar you were at that conference Mm -hmm. said somebody's on the stage speaking you're like i want to sell simple solar that's right went directly to the person throwing the event said i need to do this sold the company a few months later that's right you're building something new now. Mm-hmm. We talked about Simple Solar. Great story. 44th fastest growing company in 2023. Sold it. Amazing. Now you're building something new. Mm-hmm. What is that company? So Better Life is a health and life insurance company. And our pr- primary target is Medicare. So Medicare is Medicare is health insurance that's designed for individuals that are over the age of 65 or other individuals that have certain disabilities and qualifications. Now, The flaw in solar is there are a lot of flaws in solar. The it's the variables that get in the way. You know, you can sell a solar system and you'll have the entire alphabet worth of variables that could happen. You know, you could expect to make ten thousand dollars on a job and then by the time it gets installed and the money hits your bank account, it could be two thousand dollars. And it's very and there's so many different things that can go in the way. You know, you could sell a job, everything will be perfect, permitting comes back, says it can't be done. Like just so much so much gets in the way. Um, and I, that was a, that was a flaw of scale. Another flaw of scale was location. Like, you know, typically you had to be in certain locations, certain areas you really can't sell in. Um, the remote thing is much more difficult. Like, like, you know, I find that direct sales and actually being in person when you're selling solar is probably the best way to sell. And that could be a, that could be wrong. You know, that's just a belief that I have, but that belief, other people could find it, you know, other ways to do it better, but that's just a belief that I have. And so I found it very difficult to to scale. And in this next venture, I wanted something that was going to be, you know, that looked at all of the constraints that I had in solar and got rid of them. And I found that in Medicare. I found that in this play, you know, it's a product that the government pays for. So, you know, to a degree, it's a, you know, I can't say it's a free product, but to a degree, it's, um, you know, it's, it's a... Uh, it's funded through government resources and through social security. And so the ease of sale is quick. The ease of sale is the friction is very, very low. People need it. Most people already have it once they turn that age. And so what we offer is more of like a service mm-hmm. rather than like a sale. There's residual income on every single sale. So you sell you sell the product, you continue to get paid on that customer for the long term as long as they're on the plan. And those are businesses that sell at very high multiples. And so my plan is to take this company to a $300 million exit within the next five years. And the people that we bring along inside of our organization, we're going to allow them to participate in that exit and be part of that build. Because I find that when you, my skill set is creating platforms that help put people into good opportunities. That's what Simple Solar was. Simple Solar wasn't, you know, a solar company. Simple Solar was a personal development company. It was a platform. It's where somebody could come in and we can train them personally, professionally, financially on the skill sets, the habits, the characteristics, the attributes that they need to have to be successful. And the byproduct that we sold was solar in the meantime. And so really simple was a platform where somebody could just plug in and then start to achieve more success in their life. And better life is going to be operating under the same model. But instead of them having to be in a certain location, they can be anywhere in the world. 
as long as they have, you know, the ability to, you know, work in the U.S., so work visa, social security number, they can work anywhere in the planet, any any day of the week, have leads delivered to them, and then them make easy sales over the phone where they start to build actual wealth, not like where you make a sale and you always have to hunt for the next one. Yeah. This actually builds wealth because every single year you're adding generational income and residual income into your life. And that in itself gives a lot of people freedom, right? Like if you work for you know a couple of years and you have $200,000 worth of residual income for work that you did prior, like it's very freeing for a person. Oh yeah. Knowing that 20K a month is coming in, even if you don't go to work. That's huge. It's very huge. That's like life-changing. It's actually, it's life-changing and that's what we can do. Literally within a few years, somebody will be on a six-figure path of residual income. And, and now you can go and like, work not because you have to work but you work in terms of service and that's when you're going to start performing better something that i've noticed with you is you really have an emphasis on creating your organizations around the sellers not about you not about the c-suites no and i think that is a big reason why you're so successful it's easy for some of these people to launch these companies and be like because you just mentioned 300 million dollar exit most people would be sitting here like, fuck, I'm going to get so rich. I'm so excited. You said, we're going to have a $300 million exit in five years. And your immediate next answer, I'm going to allow all the people that go in with me to participate in that. Mm-hmm. That to me is, I mean, there there might be somebody listening right now that might message you and say, dude, I'm in. Mm-hmm. Because it's so important. Like culture is everything. And I think people don't notice that in business. And And I was talking to a buddy who, works right under a CFO of a large company and the CFO literally only hires people on cultural fits. Mm -hmm. Doesn't even care about their background, what Mm -hmm. skills they have. They're like, I could train you to do whatever you, you, you seem to fit with who I have in the office. You're hired for sure. And that's why they're a successful company. Mm -hmm. He's the CFO and they've built and exited and and now they're under a big conglomerate. Mm -hmm. So culture is so important. And I think, and maybe I'm wrong, but I think that's the way that you operate and, and what you value when you bring people in. Are you a cultural fit? Are you part of this? Are you bought into this bigger image that I want you to be a part of? Not me. I want us to be winners. And I think it's very apparent when you talk about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, here's the thing. Like in terms of building around salespeople, without sales, there is no business. And I come from the world of the salesperson. And so every time I build a business, the whole entire focus is how do we build this to cater to the salesperson? Because a salesperson is the most important person inside of a company. Yeah. Without a salesperson, there's no company. The salesperson, like anyone who said, like, like that's there's this, you know a lot of people that work in operations or you know W two or whatever. They oftentimes and they work for a company that has salespeople. They oftentimes get upset or bothered about how much money salespeople make because they're typically making four, five, six x how much you know they're making. Yeah. But what they don't realize is that without them, you don't have a job. Yeah, literally. If they're not putting a customer in front of you, all these other people, and I work in sales. We didn't talk too much about it. I work in sales at Big Tech. Like the salesperson creates opportunity for the customer success yep. manager, the renewals manager, the CX person, like all of these people because the salesperson brought a deal in. Yep. The website doesn't exist without the salesperson. You you can't run ads without them. You can't market without them. You can't pay for your legal bills. You can't pay for your Gmail without a salesperson. Like, the salesperson drives the entire business. And so I build the business to focus on creating the best opportunity for the salesperson because the salesperson truly is the most important part of the business. Anyone in the business should be overpaid. It should be the salesperson. So what do you look for when hiring a salesperson? What are some things that you, when you sit down and interview somebody that you're like, you're it? Or some things that you're like, they got no chance. Big thing, they got to be driven. They got to be driven. Like they got to want it. If their desire is high, I can do the rest. They got to be coachable. They got to be willing to be part of the group and part of the culture. And they want to, they need to be able to actually care more than just themselves. They need to care about both themselves and about the company. They want, they need to have, they need to care about the company being successful. It can't be just like a take type of relationship. Can't be like that. And you have people like that. Those people will end up just leaving your organization because they're going to find somebody who's going to give them me, me, me better. And they're going to go find somebody who gives them me, me, me better. And it's a repeat cycle. So a lot of people have 20 years of sales experience, but it's really only one year because it's one year at 20 different companies. 
And so they don't really have enough time to be able to grow into being a truly successful salesperson. But the person who stays at one thing for five years, 10 years, 15, 20 years, that person oftentimes ends up tremendously more successful because they actually are able to accumulate all those years and those compound on top of each other to graduate them into like a much higher level version of success versus the person who just hops and hops. So it, they got to be coachable. They got to be driven, ambitious, willing to learn, willing to contribute to the culture, want to see not only themselves grow, but also see the company grow as well. If we can have that, like we will have a rock star. I can train them on everything else. I can train them on everything else, but like drive and hunger is probably the most important. Yeah, because you can't really train that. That's just the way certain You want it or you don't. Yeah, that's it. And I, I always talk about that. It's like everybody wants to be an entrepreneur. Everybody wants to have a business. But the clear line in the middle is some people are driven and some just aren't. Mm-hmm. Some just don't have it. And that's fine. The world wouldn't operate if we didn't have the people who weren't the extra driven to go own their own business. Because you need these people to fall in and, and, and work the regular jobs. But that is the, the, the clear line in the sand. You're either very driven or not. Yeah. And that's the difference between a, a killer and not a killer. And I, I like what you mentioned there about like diving in on one thing, being successful, like spending two, three, four years. I had a, a, a guest on Mo, a good friend of mine. Actually, it's funny, another Mo. Mm-hmm. Um, and he mentioned he's got a lot of successful people around him. He's very successful. He's like, all my friends are successful, but the hand, like the the handful of ones that just stuck to one thing and just mastered it are the ones that are like my uber successful friends. The other ones that got the shiny object syndrome, it made a million here, made a million here, but are always looking for what's next, what's next. The ones that really stuck to the course and stayed on one thing just make constant millions, just mm-hmm. coming in. And I think it's 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 nice that you highlighted that because it's true. I see people in sales that are like, oh, well, I'm moving to this company now. This company's hot right now. They're they're getting more quota attainment over here. It's like, okay, but like, are you like actually learning the fundamentals or are you just riding waves and kind of building this false, like this false narrative that you're actually good at your job or are you just kind of, coattailing a good product which i think is interesting and sometimes people don't see Mm -hmm. i agree with that one thing i wanted to talk a lot about because now we've talked about your 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 upbringing what how you got there your your first big win now your next big win that this is we're manifesting here i'm gonna have you on again when that 300 million dollar exit comes through mentorship has been such a big part of your journey Mm -hmm. talk a little bit about mentors that you've had or or kind of moments that mentors have changed your life because I I, I find it interesting that a lot of people don't buy into mentorship that's too expensive two thousand dollars is too expensive a thousand dollars is too expensive to to talk to somebody you're a living testament of mentors made a huge impact on your life for talk about that I mean anyone who says that I mean just quite frankly if anyone says that they don't need a mentor they're an idiot they're an idiot. Like you know, a thousand bucks is too expensive. Well, how much is not having the right information costing you? Yeah. You know, if that one thousand dollars helps you get the information to make fifty thousand dollars, that ignorance is costing you forty nine k. So it's more expensive to not have the information. Yeah, ten thousand dollars is expensive for coaching, but making ninety thousand dollars less is way more expensive. So it's just it's total ignorance. It's stupid. You know, the greatest players and athletes and business people on the planet had mentors like everybody had mentors michael jordan had a mentor even when he was the best he still had a coach that was showing him what he was doing wrong and helped guide him to do more right so you know if you want to be one of the greats then you're going to have one if you want to be just like the masses then don't have one so uh, it's helped me significantly um, it's the reason why I am who I am. If I didn't invest as much as I have into coaching, mentorship, I, I, I'd be a nobody. And I mean, I'd literally be a nobody. Please feel free not to answer, but how much do you think you've spent on mentoring? Like, don't need a dollar amount. Yeah, I mean, cumulatively, cumulatively over the last, you know, 12 years, um, cumulatively over the last 12 years, it's probably a number that's north of 700 grand. Yeah. And you're sitting here saying it was by far the best decision and you wouldn't yeah. change it. Yeah. And even like, even bad mentors taught me lessons. Yeah. Cause you learn what not to look for yeah. in a mentor now, which saves you money and is like mm-hmm. a big moment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Every, every dollar invested was, was a 10x multiple. 
Every dollar invested was a 10x multiple. That is, that, uh, that's big because some people are probably listening and like, holy shit, 700 grand? Mm-hmm. But you're sitting here confidently saying it was a, it was a no-brainer. Every dollar was worth it. Every single dollar was worth it. Like I paid, I paid Grant, I paid Grant 100K for four sessions, four one-on-one sessions, and every dollar was worth it. Every single dollar was worth it. 25 grand an hour. You know, it's, it's every, and I, I say here, sit here confidently and say every single dollar was worth it because he came in in times of need where like decisions need to get made that I didn't know what to do. Yeah. And that, that being able to call on him the next day and be like, Hey, this is the problem that I'm experiencing right now. I don't know what to do. And then being able to just, here's the cheat code. I've been through this. 20 times over the last 40 years, this is exactly what you do in this situation. Boom, do this. We do it, change the condition of the business. That that $25,000 that was spent right there saved me hundreds of thousands of dollars if I made the wrong decision. Because yeah, you're kind of paying for experience Absolutely. in that moment right there. Like You're like, sure. and it, it's just natural. I mean, you, you don't know what you don't know. Mm-hmm. And you can't know things like if they've never happened if you haven't gone through it but you could pay somebody who's been through it 10 times That's and they right. could just say dude i made eight eight i failed eight times yep nine and ten i did this and we crushed it do this boom there we go hockey stick exactly That's right amazing. a lot of people a lot of people say wow 25 grand for one hour is expensive if i didn't pay that 25 grand for that hour that would have cost me like 300 400k worth of mistakes so cheap just no no brainer very, like, very literally cheap. no brainer 90 percent discount <laughs> and and what people also don't understand is like you paid twenty five thousand for that hour. It doesn't mean you can't call them or text them the next day if you need something. Mm-hmm. Or like some people think it's like, oh well, when the hour is over, it's over. No, 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 it is. It it's over. Oh yeah. Wow. Yeah, when it's over, it's over. That's mm-hmm. that that is cool. I mean, that's crazy. Yeah. But like, it's a, it's a it's a transaction. A transaction. That was the agreement. Hey, but I mean, you're sitting here saying it, it saved you four hundred grand. It, it was worth it. One call. One call. One call. Wow. Yeah. Shit. So uh, add them up. Yeah? Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's wild. Yeah. Something else I wanted to to talk about from just listening to you speak is you you've mentioned being rich is easier than being poor. Yeah. What what explain explain that a little bit. Like, you know, I say you only have to get rich once. That's it. But if you're poor, you gotta stay poor forever. And you know, yeah, getting rich, a lot of people think it's hard because of how much work you have to do. But what's harder is having the bills come in and not knowing how you're going to pay it. Yeah. Having having the late notice hit your hit your Gmail and not knowing how you're going to cover that cost. It's wanting to go on a trip so that you can, you know, give your child an experience, but not being able to take them to Disney, take them on a trip, take them on whatever because you don't have the money like that will eat away at you that eats away at your fucking soul yeah makes you weak it makes you weak you don't become proud of yourself you're not proud of yourself if you're doing that you 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 feel like a failure like it's just it's so much harder the 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 spiritual emotional toll mental toll that it hits on you and and it translates to the physical as well so like everything spiritual physical emotional mental it it literally degrades all of those pieces when you're poor and getting rich just takes effort just takes effort that's it it just takes effort two to three years all you need two to three years consistent effort cut out every single distraction set the goal be intentional all the action everything necessary don't fucking give up even when it's hard even when you don't want to two to three years you'll be a millionaire that's it that's all you fucking need you heard it here first that's it that's it being poor you're gonna be poor forever it's just so much easier to get rich. So much easier. I mean, when you frame it like that, it, it the, I don't, anybody who's listening and it's like, that's not true. That's ridiculous. You're, you're not going to be rich. Like you're, you're already coming out sure. with a negative mindset. For sure. A hundred percent. And like, and you're going to lose, like you just, you will lose. Like, you know, what happens if, what happens when, when, when your mother gets cancer and, and you don't have the money to be able to pay for it? Is that, is that hard? That's hard. I mean, oh. that's, that's probably the worst part of your life right there and you can't do especially when you can't do anything about it yeah what happens if you could do something about it what happens if you could afford the treatment send her to germany to get you know the right treatment send her to a place where like we can actually do the proper care actually you know 
pay 400 grand, 500 grand to be able to help save her life. Or she dies because you didn't work hard enough to actually get rich to be able to support them. What happens if your child gets diagnosed with something at five years old and you don't have the money to be able to take care of it? But if you had 300 grand in the bank account to be able to take care of it, you give your child, you know, the life rather than seeing them pass because you don't have it. Right. Like that's fucking hard. Yeah. And like I, it's irresponsible for a person to not become successful because that's controllable. You can exactly. control how successful you are and how much money you have. Of course, you can also control how poor you are. It's 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 a choice. Right. Like like the gutter and the Rolls Royce is just one step in either direction. Yep. Just one step. Right, you, one, one way. That's it. That's it. And time's gonna pass anyways. Yeah. Like if the time's gonna pass anyways, and you put more effort in, and you become more successful, or time's gonna pass anyway. People are like, man, two to three years. Like, yeah, two to three years of struggle and suffer versus like, you know, fifty years of this constant misery that leads to really leads to death. Like entrepreneurs live longer because they're actually living they're they're growing they're experiencing and that's entrepreneur salespeople as well you don't have to be an entrepreneur to be rich either yeah like like i've had a lot of people it, it's it's better for a lot of people to come in and be the second or third person in a business or the 15th person or the 100th person in a business you don't have to be the first person you don't have to be the founder Salespeople are fucking rich as hell yeah the average solopreneur makes 47k a year yeah right Salespeople will go out and 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 crush and make six seven figures a year and if you're smart about your money you're going to be able to put that into the right places that then pay you six seven figures a year right you just have to be smart and intentional about your money so yeah like being broke is entirely your fault and you can change it doesn't matter your color your education where you came from what your family life was like none of it fucking matters at all what matters is, is your willingness to go after it, how intentional you are, and if you're going to actually put in the effort. So all it is. It's that simple. You got to be in the right vehicle, too. You can't be putting a crazy amount of effort at McDonald's, right? Yeah. It's not going to work, right? You got to at least be in a vehicle that can allow for that to happen. Dude, that was amazing. And, like, if someone's listening and you're not fired up, you probably shouldn't continue listening to this podcast because you're just not getting any value from it. Like, that right there should be the reason why you stop watching this episode and go try and fucking crush whatever you're motivated to do. I'll, I'll even, I'll, I'll challenge that. Like, don't, don't, don't go chase like what you're motivated to do. Go chase the thing that's going to pay you the most amount of money. Like you don't have to be passionate about it. Like I wasn't passionate about door to door. I wasn't passionate about solar like at all. I had no passion for it. It was just a vehicle for money. It was the vehicle. It was the vehicle. And I was, you know, cause it's the thing. You don't have to do it for the next 60 years. Right. Yeah. You just gotta get rich once. Just gotta get rich once. You gotta get rich once. You actually, you actually probably have to get rich twice. I'll say because the first time you get rich, you probably will blow it all. Yeah. So you, and then, and then you're gonna realize that sucked, and then you're gonna get rich again, and then you're gonna do it smarter the second time. So, so you do, you probably have to get rich twice. Have to get rich twice. Yeah. Uh, you know, unless you listen to this and you don't make those mistakes, yeah. you only you get a mentor well. and don't go broke and and That's learn right. what you're supposed to do with your money. That's right. So I always like to end the the interviews with a question about you. And my question is, 10 years passed and you look back, what needs to happen in these next 10 years for you to look back and say, I was successful? I succeeded. Yeah. So so having this exit is going to be big, right? Like having a $300 million exit, I think is going to be, it's a really, really big thing because in doing that, we'll probably create over a thousand millionaires in the process. Um probably help over 5,000 people get to a six-figure residual income, which is impactful. Um, and then from there, be able to launch myself as an individual that has global impact, right? Like I want to be I want to be somebody who who is looked at as, as an Arab influential leader to the Arab world and people know like, holy shit, like I can do it too. Like I didn't come from great history, great background. Like when I was born and we were living in Toronto, Canada, like my family was getting welfare checks from the government. So we didn't come from anything. We had the wrong information. Like my parents operated with the wrong information. My parents right now, like, you know, I take care of my parents now. Like I send them money every single month and all they had was just the wrong information. And I want to be somebody who can show literally the planet that if you can simply just change the information that you have and that you operate based off of, you can change your life. 
it's it's been the same pattern every single generation coming down until it reached me and then when it reached me i was like there's something wrong with this pattern let's go ahead and take this line that's going like this and let's move it this way and we're now going to go this path rather than continue going this path and the thing that changed that path was the information that i had and so i realized that if you can change the information that you have unlearn the things that you've learned before you can change the trajectory of your life and I want to be the individual that people can look at as a global figure as somebody who actually did that and and be able to impact the lives of billions. Dude, I, I, I love it. And I, I do think that you will achieve that. I'm confident that, that I will have you uh, again on the show multiple times and it will be because the success just continues to happen. And I think that you've displayed in your time and even in this conversation, you have what it takes to reach all these goals. You know what you need to do. And you are a perfect example of like, just work hard and be locked in on success and you will achieve it. So I appreciate you for being so open, talking about all this. I think it's really important for people listening who maybe haven't taken that step forward or on the fence, hear stories like this and just say, fuck it. I got, I'm, I'm going, I'm doing it. And I, I appreciate you for, for dropping all this knowledge. Well, dude, here's the thing, right? Like if you're going to fail, like the floor is right there. Right like, there. How 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 far are you gonna drop? Not that far. That's right. You just get right back. It's funny. Like, like you already hate your life as it is. <laughs> yeah, just change. You already ha- hate your life as it is. Like if you fail, you're just right where you are. If you succeed, you're somewhere better. Yeah, it can't get that much worse. You can't get, you already you already hate where you're at. You already hate where you're at. And most of you probably hate where you're at. And like that's cool. Realize it, recognize it, do something different about it. Don't don't just continue to sit and do the same damn thing. Like, just take action. Stop being a pussy. Most people are just pussies. That's it. Most people are just pussies. Just take action and get it. I'm like, in this podcast, I didn't need to do this. I've got a great job. I've got a great life. But I wanted more. I wanted to meet new people. I wanted to talk with new people. I wanted to build my network for when I want to launch a company or I want to go take a stab at something. So instead of just pestering people in the DM, begging them for a coffee, I was like, why don't I just build a platform where I get to interview them and spend time with them? And now we're here 54 episodes later, one year later, still doing it. But I took action. Mm -hmm. I said I wanted to launch a podcast, paid a mentor January 1st of 2023, launched the show in two months, and now we're here. Mm -hmm. And it's all because I took action. And I wanted to create something more than what I already had. And now I've created all of these opportunities, these moments, this Rolodex of successful individuals that I would have probably had to pay a lot of money to meet and talk to. I created this environment brought value to them, brought value to myself. And it's all because I wanted to take action. So anybody listening to this, just go do something like just go change your regular life. Go take a step, go try something you've always wanted to try. Like don't just sit around on your ass eating potato chips on the weekend, doing nothing. Go take a step, go take a risk and go be successful. Mm -hmm. That's right. Dude, where can people follow you? Where can people find you? I want them to be able to connect with you. Yeah, so right now my Instagram is at follow the leader, my last name, F-A-L-A-H. Uh, we're looking to try and change that and get at MoFala, uh, trying to get that secured so so we can start branding as as MoFala. Um, started up some stuff on YouTube as well, at MoFala on YouTube. Uh, those are probably the two, two best places, but if you want to reach out to me, it's going to be through Instagram DMs. Um, anybody who's like, Hey, I need a vehicle. I need to get around this. The people in my company, everybody who works with me inside of my organization, they get my mentorship on a daily basis. So, so that's how that's like, like I have people who pay me for coaching and that's, that's cool. But where I'm most passionate is helping the people that are on my team. Yep. Right. You're in alignment with me. You're helping me more than just like the money that I'm earning from like, you know, you paying me to be your coach, but you being part of my company, we're on the same team. It's a different type of energy. It's a different type of coaching. And so like we we provide a platform. Better Life provides a platform for people to come in and become successful in their life, personally, professionally, financially, whatever that means for you. And we help guide the path for that. And so, you know, if, if this was valuable, right, reach out to me, follow me. And any questions you have, happy to help any of you. And Andres, man, I'm super happy you, you had me come on here today. Dude, for sure. And again, all of that will be linked in the description below. Go ahead, click it, reach out, get in touch. Thank you so much again, brother, for making the drive down here. Absolutely. It's an amazing conversation. For sure. Thanks for having me.